Coming up on Loyola News Chicago, we'll learn more about campus workers' gripes with the university. Plus, a side hustle goes wrong for some Loyola students. From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Coco Sharp. And I'm Mary Planky. There's lots to cover, so let's get into it. Aramark workers at Loyola have voted to strike. In a nearly unanimous vote, 97% of workers voted on Monday to strike, with more negotiations coming today. A committee member of Loyola's Graduate Student Union explains what all kinds of workers at the university have been pushing for. Making sure that people that are, you know, have pre-existing conditions, you know, for example, don't, shouldn't, shouldn't have to teach on campus, right? Or should have some option of you know, hybrid education. Um, we've advocated for, um, you know, making sure that there's still contact tracing on campus. That's something that recently that we've been pushing for as well, which re has recently dropped off, right? Um, so we have pushed for maintaining masks on campus. Last week, the Students for Affordable Education released a report alleging the average Aramark worker at Loyola makes just over $17,000 a year. We'll keep you updated on the Aramark workers strike and have another story on graduate student workers next week. People using public transit will still be required to wear masks for another couple weeks. The CDC announced yesterday the transportation mask mandate will be extended until May 3rd. The mandate applies to all public transportation from the L to buses, regional trains, taxis, rideshares, and planes regardless of vaccination status. The CTA routinely sends out reminders telling riders that masks are still required on all trains, buses, stations, and platforms. Inflation rates have been skyrocketing in the past months. Prices will continue to rise. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the, U the food index increased about 1% in March. Food has gone, almost, has gone up almost 9% over the last year. Energy prices increased 11% just in March and have been increased by a third of the, a third of the last year. Overall, the consumer price index has ri risen the highest rate ever since 1981, and it shows no signs of slowing down. Students can find financial support on campus and online about how to manage difficult, difficult times. Loyola has a financial literacy class that teaches students about how to manage their debt, taxes, and more. Daniel Mat Matamoris teaches the class and is also the associate director at Loyola's financial aid office. He says students can reach out to the financial aid office if they are struggling with their finances. If you just want to come in and meet with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, they can actually schedule an appointment directly with me. I have my office and my, like, uh, door as available to students because again this is what I get paid for so don't feel like you're alone in this. More resources are found on Loyola AIDS website under the financial wellness tab. Manamores also says that he will help students fill out applications for SNAP, a food assistance program. There's a lot going on this month with three major religious holidays, Easter for Christians, Passover for Jews, and Ramadan for Muslims. This marks the first year since the pandemic where Muslim students are celebrating Ramadan in person. The Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs Office is collaborating with Campus Ministry to provide students with opportunities to celebrate Ramadan throughout the holiday month. Muslims fast between sunrise and sunset and have trouble finding restaurants openly so dining halls are extending their hours to accommodate those students. And Campus Ministry is hosting extended prayers from 9.30 to 11 p.m. nightly throughout the month. Catherine Brandt is a Loyola alumnus and the founder of Dine After Dark, which supports restaurants extending their hours to accommodate Muslim customers. I came across this news story about a high school in Brooklyn um, that had scheduled its prom during Ramadan. Um, which was forcing a whole bunch of Muslim students to choose between either attending their prom or observing their religious holiday tradition like with their family and friends. Brandt developed the program as part of a graduate project. She continues to make connections with local restaurants and is working to expand Dine After Dark across the country. Ramadan lasts until May 1st and there are more events to follow courtesy of the SDMA and Campus Ministry. 
Loyola's Easter break is starting this afternoon. Reporter Chloe Johnson talks about students' plans over the long weekend. With Easter break just around the corner, students have many plans. Probably spending time with my family. Uh, I haven't uh, seen them in a couple months, so I'm excited to spend some quality time with them. Uh, not super big plans. I'm staying here, but my best friend is actually coming to visit me, so I'm super excited. It's her birthday weekend, so Ooh. yeah. I guess I hope that the, bring, that the break brings me some rest, just because we barely had a spring break. Like, it was such a long time ago, so I just want some time to rest and, like, regain some energy over break. I just need, like, a break. <laughs> like, a mini break from, like, anything that has to do with school. So I made sure I got all my homework done. Um, so I can just enjoy this weekend and not have any stress. From hanging out with family and friends to just getting rest, students are excited for the break. Chloe Johnson, Loyola, New Chicago. I don't know about you, Coco, but I cannot wait for spring break. Same here, I can't wait to see friends and family. Next up, find out why Loyola's athletic hire is celebrating a homecoming. And coming up, the campus gets ready for so cap and gown season. There you go. I'm, 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 I'm oh, yes, sir. That's good. Netflix and chill. Don't let your Netflix and chill become Netflix and spill. You idiot. Be smart. Changes are on the way for Loyola women's basketball program. Three weeks after coach Kate Ochter's contract was no longer extended to Loyola Athletics was selected, selected the next head coach for the team. Amelia Ickes has more on the Arlington Heights native who will be making her return to Loyola. Athletics introduced the newest head coach of the women's basketball program at a press conference at the Alfie Norville practice facility this Monday. Prior to introducing the coach, Athletic Director Steve Watson thanked Kate Ochter and her staff. I want to thank um, Kate Ochter and her staff. Uh, our women's basketball program is in a much better spot now than it was six years ago, and I want to publicly thank her and her staff for all that they did to help, help get us to this point. Ochter spent six seasons as the head coach of the Ramblers. She led the team to an overall record of 67 wins and 110 losses and a conference record of 36 wins and 72 losses during her tenure. The Ramblers had their best season yet under her with a winning record of 18 and 12 to finish fifth in the Missouri Valley Conference this season. Loyola Athletics announced that Octor's contract was not renewed on March 24th. Replacing her as head coach is Allison Guth, who spent the last six seasons as the head coach of the Yale Bulldogs. Guth racked up 99 victories and led her team to five consecutive winning seasons while at Yale. She also got her coaching start at Loyola in 2005 as an assistant coach. Guth has also been an assistant coach at Missouri, DePaul, and Northwestern. Guth spoke to the values that guide her coaching philosophy at the press conference. And I've sought out opportunities in my career at universities that really celebrated the three core values that mean the most to me, and those are academic integrity, competitive, competitive excellence, and social responsibility. Guth will spend her first season as head coach at Loyola as the Ramblers join the Atlantic 10 Conference for the 2022-23 season. Amelia Ickes, Loyola News, Chicago. The schedule for next season has not been released, but fans can already start to buy, coach, to buy tickets for Coach Guth's first season at the helm. It's only a few weeks until graduation, and seniors are feeling the rush to get ready in time. On Wednesday, seniors at Loyola's Water Tower campus picked up their pre-ordered caps and gowns at the grad fair. Students who missed the pre-order deadline were able to buy theirs in person. Besides caps and gowns, the grad fair also gave seniors the chance to pick up their class rings, meet with reps from alumni relations for the chance to ask questions, and win free Loyola gear. We are connecting with students that are going to be alumni soon. Uh, so they come here to the grad fair to pick up their cap and gown. And we just want to hear about how they want to be engaged after their graduation. So we've got all this alumni swag. Seniors who haven't picked up their caps and gowns yet can get theirs at the Lakeshore or Water Tower campus bookstores after April 15th. 
The Loyola Phoenix reported this week that the university is cracking down on graduating students selling their commencement tickets. The College of Arts and Sciences graduates will only get four tickets. All other schools will give students six tickets. Some students have been posting their tickets for sale on social media since they became available. Some listings have been as high as $150 for one ticket. The university says that they will revoke a student's tickets if they are caught selling them. Many students are proud of their work in college. Robert Malkamaki reports on how student-run radio station is giving students the opportunity to show off what they've done. The end of the spring semester means it's festival season. Loyola's campus is no different. Loyola's student-run radio station, WLUW, is hosting a student showcase next week. We spoke with General Manager Eleni Proleman to learn more about the event. We've got Zilched from Detroit, which specifically Chloe, the lead singer, is going to be performing from Zilched. And then we have Beachwood from New York. And then we have um, Milk Belly, which is a local um, group that we're really, really excited about. Um, they recently performed at Riot Fest. And, you know, it's just really cool to have such an awesome band playing um, at this show. Any student that wants to go can just show up that day with their Loyola ID and um, they can purchase a wristband. Um, it's not really, we're purchasing, we're selling tickets, but it's more like a $5 donation. The showcase will take place in Ireland's pub on the Lakeshore campus. It'll be from six to 10 on next Thursday, April the 28th. Robert Malkamaki, Loyola News, Chicago. All money goes to National Independent Venue Association, which has been helping concert venues stay open during the pandemic. If you're a true crime fan, you could get paid up to $2,400 by watching a 24-hour true crime show marathon. The documentary streaming service Magellan TV is looking for one person to take on the 24-hour marathon and live tweet about it on social media. The marathon will include shows from Murder Maps, Behind Bars, and Murder on the Internet. Even though it's a 24-hour marathon, the person chosen for the job will have 48 hours to complete it. The winner will also get a one-year membership plan for the streaming site. To apply, head on over to Magellan TV's website, enter your social media information, and why you like the genre of true crime. I don't know about you, Coco, but that sounds fun, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people fighting for that position. Oh, I definitely agree. <laughs> That's all the news we have for today. Thanks for joining us. Join us next time for Loyola News Chicago.